Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel. In this video, I would like to explain a problem on Fourier transforms. See the statement of the given problem. Find the Fourier transform of the function f of x is equal to 1 when mod x value is less than or equal to 1 and mod x is greater than 1 then functioning value is 0. So this is called double valued function. Okay. And also it is known as a discontinuous function. Okay. And hence deduce the value of integral 0 to infinity sin x sin x by x dx. Okay. First of all we have to find out the Fourier transform of the given function. After that we have to evaluate this definite integral from this Fourier transform. Okay. See. So first of all we have to change the conditions in the given function. Okay. According to the modulus definition mod x is less than or equal to a is nothing but x value should lies between minus a and plus a. So minus a is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to a. Here we have a is equal to 1. So mod x is less than or equal to 1 is nothing but x value should lies between minus 1 and plus 1. Okay. In the similar way mod x is greater than a is nothing but x value should less than minus a value and uh, x should be greater than plus a value. This is the definition of mod x is greater than a. So mod x is greater than 1 is nothing but x value should less than minus 1 and uh, x value should greater than 1. Okay. See. Given function can be written as can be written as f of x is equal to 1 if mod x is less than or equal to 1 is nothing but this one minus 1 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to plus 1 and 0 if x value is less than minus 1 and uh, x value should get than plus 1 okay see now Again, I will write this function as, I will write in order, f of x is equal to 0 if x value is less than minus 1. After that, write this one, this condition, which is 1. If minus 1 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to plus 1. And finally, it is again 0, okay, if x value is greater than 1. I am writing the conditions in order. Okay, this is the given function. Okay, see, I will explain these conditions on the real number line. See, minus infinity plus infinity. Okay, this is negative infinity and positive infinity. Midpoint is 0 and here, here you have minus 1. Right side you have positive 1. So, if x value is less than minus 1, then function is 0. So, in this part, function is given as 0. If function is between, if x value is between minus 1 and plus 1. So, in this region, function is plus 1. Okay, given that function is 1, if x value should lies between minus 1 and plus 1. And again here, after plus 1, if x is greater than 1, again in this region, function is 0. Okay, in this way, function is defined. We are going to find out Fourier transform of this function. Okay. By definition of Fourier transform, by definition of Fourier transform of f of x, we have Fourier transform of f of x is equal to integral minus infinity to plus infinity e power i lambda x into f of x into dx where lambda is parameter which is known as kernel okay see now we have to separate the conditions here in the definition integration limits are minus infinity to plus infinity but here our function is defined for x value is less than minus 1 and x value lies between plus 1 minus 1 to plus 1 and x value is greater than positive 1 that's why I will write this integration as 4a transform of f of x is equal to 
minus infinity to minus 1. Okay. See this real line. Remember this real number line. You can easily understand this separating the integration. Minus infinity to plus infinity. This is minus 1 and plus 1. So, I will separate the integration from minus infinity to minus 1. e power i lambda x into f of x dx plus integral minus 1 to plus 1 e power i lambda x into f of x into dx plus integral plus 1 to infinity e power i lambda x into f of x into dx okay now that is equal to so if x value is less than minus 1 then what is the function 0 so integration e power i lambda x into 0 is 0 integral minus 1 to plus 1 so here x value is from minus 1 to plus 1 that's why f of x is plus 1 so e power i lambda x into 1 plus again if x value is greater than plus 1 function becomes 0 so last part is also 0 now what is the integration of e power i lambda x with respect to x e power i lambda x by x coefficient it would be i lambda within the limits minus 1 to plus 1 okay apply the upper limit 1 by i lambda is the constant term whenever we have x represented by upper limit you will get e power i lambda minus whenever we have x represented by lower limit minus 1 so you will get e power minus i lambda so that is equal to 1 by i lambda into already you know that e power i theta minus e power minus i theta is equal to 2i sin theta according to the Euler's theorem so this is 2i sin lambda so i i getting cancelled i i getting cancelled so remaining term is 2 sin lambda by lambda so i got Fourier transform of the given function f of x is equal to 2 sin lambda by lambda so this is a function in terms of lambda that's why i am taking as a bar of lambda okay because we have to find out a value of the definite integral 0 to infinity sin x by x okay in any problem in the concept of Fourier transformation the derivation should be obtained from inverse Fourier transform see now take sliding deduction by definition of inverse Fourier transform okay actually Fourier transformation of f of x is in terms of lambda that's why inverse Fourier transform of this function should be in terms of x that's why inverse Fourier transform is represented by f of x which is equal to 1 by 2 pi into integral minus infinity to plus infinity f bar of lambda into e power minus i lambda x into d lambda this is the formula of inverse Fourier transform don't forget it okay now f of x is equal to 1 by 2 pi into integral minus infinity to plus infinity what is f bar of lambda here 2 sin lambda by lambda into e power minus i lambda x into d lambda now for our derivation i will replace lambda is equal to sorry x is equal to 0 put x is equal to 0 in above so you will get f of 0 here 2 2 getting cancelled so you will get only 1 by pi integral minus infinity to plus infinity sin lambda by lambda into e power 0 because here we have x and i am replacing x is equal to 0 so e power 0 is 1 simply you will get d lambda okay but here what is f of 0 from the definition of the f of x x is equal to 0 x is equal to 0 is lies between minus 1 and plus 1 so that's why function becomes 1 so this is equal to 1 so 1 by pi and we are observing that sin lambda is an odd function already we discussed about the even and odd function concept in the concept of Fourier series and uh, lambda is also odd function from the properties of odd functions and even functions odd function by odd function should be even so that's why 
you should write this integration as 2 times of integral 0 to infinity sin lambda by lambda okay make the lower limit to 0 and write 2 in the product into d lambda from this okay what is integral 0 to infinity sin lambda by lambda into d lambda is equal to pi by 2 okay here we have 2 by pi you can take this side you will get pi by 2 so that is integral 0 to infinity sin lambda by lambda d lambda is equal to pi by 2 that is i will write this integration as integral 0 to infinity sin x by x into dx is equal to pi by 2 this is the required derivation because in the concept of definite integration variable is not important you can take any variable you can get the same result just i am replacing lambda is equal to x here okay for getting the given result okay and uh, limits are same this is the value of integral 0 to infinity sin x by x dx which is pi by 2 okay in this way we can crack the problem in the next video i will give some more problems on fourier transforms thank you very much